I'm here in Dubai at the moment and amid the entire city basically beginning to fall apart with heavy rainfall, I decided to hop on and record a little YouTube video for you looking at how value is distributed in crypto markets. So this video is called the you know, a crypto sector breakdown, but essentially I want to discuss how value is distributed in crypto and how to think about which different sectors or pillars of value exist in these markets so you can create a mental map to understand the market that's what i want to get across in this video and really the first one is you know digital stores of value so this represents by far the largest amount of value in crypto currently so if you look at something called bitcoin dominance you'll see that it's in excess of 50 percent which basically means that all of the market capitalization so all of the value of crypto of all of that value Bitcoin itself represents 55%. And Ethereum represents a large percentage as well. So those two assets still represent the large majority of value within crypto. So, you know, digital stores of value is really still the predominant value driver for the crypto markets. And this is basically the digital gold idea, right? That I can hold a non-sovereign store of value such as Bitcoin and to a lesser extent Ethereum, but Ethereum is increasingly being considered as a store of value alongside Bitcoin. And these two, as I said, represent the large majority of value in crypto markets and the digital stores of value. As they increase in price, that tends to trickle down to all of the rest of the sectors or pillars of value, which I'm going to discuss in this video. So these are really pivotal, if you like. Generally speaking, in order for someone to construct a bullish thesis for themselves in order to become bullish about crypto they have to first become bullish on the idea of having a digital store of value because as i said everything kind of waterfalls down from there and then the third category here in the digital stores of value would be real world assets and this is really just projects who have taken a store of value that exists in the traditional financial markets such as property such as a united states government bond and they have tokenized it, or a dollar in the case of a stable coin, right? They've taken a dollar in a bank account, they've issued a token against it, and that's something that you can hold on a blockchain in a digital form. So in a sense, that is a digital store of value, but in a different way to Bitcoin and Ethereum, because clearly Bitcoin and Ethereum are non-sovereign assets, right? So if a jurisdiction didn't like the fact that you were tokenizing their property, they could put stop to it, whereas they couldn't put stop to you holding Bitcoin. In, and, and that's why the value proposition is similar to something like gold and people are increasingly realizing that and coming across to the idea which is probably why bitcoin is trading back at its all-time highs which was set you know, back in 2021 as people have re-realized and reappreciated that idea once again and then the second pillar and this one is a big one and this is one which most people usually focus their attention on as it pertains to altcoins and this is really the applications which can be built on top of smart contract blockchains, which I will speak about you know, in the last section because the last section is really what powers the applications. And these applications can be a number of things. So as I said before, you've got stable coins, which are really a representation of a dollar on a blockchain. And of course, one of the largest uses of blockchains currently is just payments. And depending on who you are and depending on which circles you mix in and what business you operate, you might have seen that increasingly people are not only paying for goods and services using stablecoins, but also accepting goods and services using stablecoins. And I expect that, that to continue, especially for cross-border payments, right? If you're dealing with someone in South Africa and you're in Spain, you can agree on a price in dollars and you send them USDC or USDT extremely cheaply where an international bank transfer would take three to five days and there'd be some cost there. So the use case for payments is the strongest out of any of these applications and the rest of them are on their journey. So decentralized finance essentially uses these assets, all of these assets, Bitcoin, Ethereum, stable coins, and other altcoins as well, and builds a financial ecosystem around those assets. So for example, you wanna take your Bitcoin and you wanna take a loan against it. There's decentralized finance applications which act kind of like a bank who will allow you to collateralize your Bitcoin and, and borrow against it. Equally, there's places where you can swap one asset into another and you can do that 
in a decentralized venue, not on a centralized exchange. So you can hold your own assets in your wallet, swap them for another without touching a, a third party. And, and that, that's, the, that's the idea of DeFi, right? It's a decentralized way of doing finance. And that is exchanging, borrowing and lending, and also some more complicated applications as well, such as you know derivatives, buying options or buying futures as well. And that tends to be more speculative in nature, but you could also argue it provides non-speculative value in the form of hedging. You know, if you hold Bitcoin, maybe you want to hedge against that exposure and you want to short one Bitcoin against it. And you can do that in a decentralized venue using DeFi applications. Another one would be gaming. Gaming is one that hasn't particularly seen its, its kind of J-curve of growth like payments is seen currently. But there are projects working on building gaming games on blockchains equally with crypto and AI. A lot of the projects here are very nascent. They're more ideas at the moment than they are products which are actually being used by consumers. But still, people are working on AI-related applications that exist in a decentralized fashion. And I've discussed a lot of these on my channel. So that could be AI agents, that could be building a marketplace for GPU compute, right? So you've got hungry models on the one side, and I don't mean fitness models, I mean AI models on the one side, on the other side you've got GPUs which are gonna allow those models to be trained and do inference and putting those together in a decentralized fashion. That closely relates to the idea of decentralized physical infrastructure, right? So building, using crypto economics to incentivize people to actually set up physical infrastructure. And one key project here that if you're interested in this idea, you should look into is Helium. So Helium have actually created a mobile data network in the US using crypto to incentivize people to set up hotspots in their, in their homes, which gives connectivity to people who use their mobile data plan. Extremely interesting project and, you know, really connecting the real world to crypto, which is something which we haven't seen a lot of and we're beginning to see more of which for a lot of people, specifically those who come from more traditional background, it gives them comfort when they come and look at crypto these days because it's like, okay, crypto is not just building castles in the sky. There is some of that clearly, but it's also, okay, it actually has a use case which plugs into the real world. And that kind of relates to payments and decentralized physical infrastructure particularly. And also, you know, some of the, the tokenized treasuries and the real world asset stuff seems to interest a lot of the traditional financial folks as well. Another application, if you like, would be, you know, I've put meme coins here, but it's really just speculation in and of itself. If you imagine the market capitalization of casinos on the stock market, that's a big number, right? I can't give you the exact number, but it's definitely hundreds of billions of dollars in market capitalization of casinos, both online casinos and physical casinos who allow people to gamble their money and they enjoy gambling their money and it serves a niche and it serves a demand that people have to gamble and speculate. And in a large sense, there are pockets of the crypto markets which do that very, very well. And people enjoy speculating on meme coins. People enjoy buying a token of a funny dog. And if they make money on it, they're happy. If they don't make money on it, they enjoyed gambling, essentially. And that is a large part of what drives value in crypto currently. We, we shouldn't be embarrassed about that we should accept that and actually say it as it is you know there are growing use cases in other verticals such as payments and some of these other ones which i've discussed but yes we do have to recognize that a large part of the value generated in crypto currently comes from speculative activity and meme coins are a large part of that so you need to realize that as you're participating and looking to invest or trade crypto and then the final pillar of value, if you like, is really everything that powers the above. So clearly you've got smart contract blockchains and these can be layer one blockchains like Solana, or they could be layer two blockchains like Base. And the difference between those, you can go and look at that yourself, but it really just means that there's diff slightly different, the layer twos are built in order to provide an environment for people to do cheap transactions and they rely on the security of the layer one. It gets a little bit technical as it when it comes to layer ones and layer twos and how they interact with each other. Plenty, plenty of resources online. And if you are super, super interested, find me on Telegram and 
I'll give you some resources to actually look more deeply into that, some reading and whatnot. Happy to do that. And then you've got a lot of middleware which really connects these blockchains to one another in the form of bridges and what are called interoperability protocols which allow one blockchain to interact with another. So if you've got, for example, you know, a stable coin on one blockchain, you want to move it to another, you use a, a kind of piece of middleware called a bridge to move that value from one to another. So you've got loads and loads of projects in various different categories which essentially act as middleware. They're like pieces of infrastructure which exist in the crypto economy to plug various different things together and also to improve the experience of stuff like decentralized finance. So you will have heard me on this channel probably talking about you know staking Ethereum or staking Solana and then you've got projects which allow you to stake your Ethereum or your Solana, get a receipt token against it and then use that in decentralized finance. And if that sounds very, very complicated, I would recommend watching loads of my other videos. If you watch one a day, I do believe that by the end of watching one every day, you'll be far, far ahead of the rest of the pack when it comes to understanding crypto, understanding the fundamentals of crypto, not just a oh, which coin is going to 100x. If you want to go and look at that type of content, go elsewhere. But on this channel, you're going to find much more fundamental based ideas and content. Going off on a bit of a tangent, coming back, these are kind of your infrastructure and your middleware which powers the applications and which powers the applications which ultimately service the stores of value. And as I said at the beginning, as the, store, as the stores of value being Bitcoin and Ethereum and stable coins increase in size, that value trickles down to everything else. Because imagine if Bitcoin didn't have any value and Ethereum didn't have any value and there were no stable coins, decentralized finance wouldn't exist because it would have no assets to serve on the basis that those assets have value well then DeFi has value because you know it's a lend you're able to take your bitcoin take a loan against it if that bitcoin has value then it generates economic activity and it generates economic activity of value so that's really all i had today a video to understand the pillars of value which exist within crypto and then build an investment thesis for each one of these pillars based on that so i do hope you enjoyed today's video i hope it was useful for you check out the links in the description and i look forward to seeing you again on thursday